yeah, so yeah, I was born and raised in Vermont and have been playing music ever since I was five years old, I think. And then um, I got into recording when I was 16 or 17, and I think that definitely kind of like re jump started my interest in music because I had been a little bit tired of just piano lessons. <laughs> and I came to New York, uh, it was maybe a little bit on a whim, uh, just not really sure exactly what I was going to come and do, but just knew that a lot of the things I was interested in were happening here. I don't know, I just never have stopped doing music. It's always, it's like it's always been a priority for me and, and kind of the way that I relate to the rest of the world and the kind of way that I communicate and, and relate to the world. Uh, yeah, so this, um, a lot of this was made after I had an accident uh, last spring uh, where I broke both wrists and arms and ribs and some other bones. <laughs> uh, and and I, had been, I had been talking like a little bit off and on with Brian Kasenik of The Bunker because um, he liked a few, like, a few things from my last releases, um, but I hadn't really sent him anything yet. Uh, and so the name Cast Off definitely refers to me like being in two arm casts and, and trying to make music. Uh, and also Cast Off was sort of like casting off like a ship, like going out again. So I was sort of alluding to that feeling of just like um, being like brought, brought down and having like going through a recovery and then like trying to like launch my life off again, basically. Because uh, like everything had been on was on hold for about two months, um, so yeah, uh, and there there is the the track the title track as they say, cast off. I do feel like is, I do feel like it's a bit of a self portrait in a way, and I didn't think of that when I was making it, um, but the sounds and rhythms and that it also that it has a piano in it, which is like the instrument that I started on. Uh, every time I listen to it, I do feel like it's like. This is like me. It's the most me. <laughs> so uh, this record is from a band called Christmas. That was uh, they were from Olympia, Washington, and I got to know them when I was an intern at K Records for a summer. They were just a local band, uh, but that summer was that summer was extremely important. I feel like in my development of just kind of getting out of Vermont and like getting, uh, getting into the headspace of like, you, like if you want to do music and you want to do these things, you can just do it on your own. I mean, it's like, I feel like I kind of understood DIY. I was like, oh yeah, you really just do it all yourself. You don't wait for a label to like come and pick you up and do all these things. You put together your shows, you have house shows. It was like this world I had kind of known of, but just never had experienced that environment in Vermont. Uh, so yeah, that was a really good summer in Olympia. And this was just one of my most favorite bands. It's sort of like surf punk. It's like insane. And actually the singer, the, the singer for this band, Emily Bean Blossom, makes incredible soap. <laughs> so there's a plug, yeah. And they're not, they're not, they're not active anymore uh, in this band, but, but yeah, this I really, really love. All right. And then uh, this is a record that I bought I get long before I moved to New York um, on the label Eros. Um, it's just like these house disco-y sort of edits. Um, but this one I wanted to bring and, and talk about because it's something that I was like in love with and like was really entranced by the sound, but I hadn't heard a lot of other things that sounded quite like this. So it just kind of was bringing to mind all those questions of like, where does this come from? What sort of environment? Um, like. Who, who is having the parties where that, that's this, that, that? Who is hosting the parties and playing this and like where can I find that? <laughs> and I still play tracks off of this today. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's had a lot of lo longevity. And then this is a special record that I got when my friend and I hosted um, a listening party that was based off of Antarctica. Uh, based off of Shackleton's expedition in Antarctica. 
And so this, I guess, would also be more representative of like the ambient interest um, that I have. But it's by Douglas Quinn called Fathom, and they're field recordings from the Arctic and from Antarctica. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, it's really amazing. <laughs> and uh, I played this a lot at Hypnotic Spa. Um, I hear about ambient rooms happening at parties and raves like on the west coast and here so I think yeah it's thankfully doing well because I think it is something that was part of the original rave culture and and is actually like a well needed thing at a party uh, sometimes you need to take a break um, so starting hypnotic spa uh, with my partner Sean he and I have just we're we're very excited that, it's been, that it has been well received and that it's been able to grow since we started it. We really had no idea. We were just having fun doing it at like small bars. But yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to get into some field recording. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, and, and that one he was using uh, like hydrophones, I think they're called, like un underwater microphones and capturing the um, echoing seal calls under the ice, which kind of then sound like lasers because it's bouncing so much. It's really, it sounds like, like, like Star Wars laser shots. That's wild, yeah. Yeah. What's this? Oh my god, yeah. Uh, this is Shabazz Palace's album, Black Up. Um, and I just wanted to bring this because this, ooh, it's a little dusty. <laughs> Sorry, Shabazz. Um, yeah, this album was just hugely influential in the terms of production and sound because uh, I hadn't ever heard anything quite like this. Like it's, it's, I guess I would say it's a bit like trip hop, but not as just 90s sounding trip hop uh, and hip hop. And yeah, like still to this day, this is just, this is one of the records that I listen to and I'm like, I'm still learning things from. Um, it's like how I feel about like Gemini's productions as well. Uh, but yeah, this was, this is huge <laughs> for me. Uh, and then the last one, take the plastic off. Uh, this is an Anthony Sheikh Shakir record. And this one, I didn't know of this track until I heard, uh, until I heard uh, my boyfriend playing this out a lot. And it's, that's what I want. And it is, uh, it samples a B-52's Mesopotamia song, um, but it's just like a, a pounding like Detroit house track. So it was kind of like, it brought together these two worlds of like, I love this like more like rock and roll and like the 80s stuff like B-52's, um, but it's, an, it's sampled for this like crazy, amazing house song. <laughs> and Anthony Sheikh Shakir is definitely uh, he's another person that I listen to and feel like I learn from every time I listen to any of his music. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Hard tracks to play out sometimes. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, and I guess, yeah, it's also, it's definitely also special because it's like something, I mean, I've learned a lot of music from uh, my boyfriend. He's also a DJ. Uh, so this is just, Another special one that reminds me of him. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. Uh, did you get all of the? Yeah. Okay. Can get some. Oh, uh, that was convenient. That was. Convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Um, I hope that was what okay. Do you want to yeah. yeah. Make sure. Okay. Cool. Um, are you? You want to keep recording? No, I think we're. I think we're pretty much good. Yeah. It's, uh, awesome.